Maurice Jones Drew. What's what? up, Uche? What's good, man? What's good? How you doing, brother? Oh, man, listen, bro. Trying to get skinny again. Trying to get you both. <laughs> hey, <laughs> working out. I'm working out right now. I just got done working out. Ran here, had to download a couple things, make sure everything's working so I can hop on this with you. But it's always good to see you, bro. How's everything yeah, going? Man. Good to see you too. It's going well, going well. What you uh what you been up to? I mean, I know I see you on the TV and everything, but that Instagram is kind of hot too, though. Yeah, you know what? Uh something that you know, I've never really been a, a public person, you know that, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. With my job, they want us to be more vocal on social media, which is cool with me. Um, so I've been kind of trying to show a little back uh behind the scenes deal, just dealing mm -hmm. with the pandemic and being at home and the different setups you have to have and I have two computers that I'm working with, and and then I've been doing Good Morning Football the last couple, uh, the last week, which on the West Coast is a 2:30 a.m. meeting. What? And then I'm on from 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. And then, like, I've been going to sleep, Brad, like eight o'clock, like out cold at eight o'clock, <laughs> waking up still droggy at 2:30. But um, it's been a great experience, man, and it's. Uh, you know, I, I love talking ball. It's a way to keep me around it. And um, so I've been really focused on that. My kids are doing well. Everybody's doing well. Uh, my two boys were, you know, football season's canceled for them in California. So they're upset about that. And then my daughter, her cheer competitions, my, uh, her cheer is canceled as well. So they're just working man, out. Man. You got just a full go. house. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Full house 24-7. Man, I know. I know that can be a, a that's, that, that can drive a brother crazy at times, but. Uh, no, nah, man, it's good. It's good that you're, you know, getting work done with NFL Network. Obviously, you know, you're a big name. You got some influence there. They want you to, to use that. Uh, but uh, tell me what you think a little bit about uh, what's going on right now with uh, this Nick Bosa. I mean, this my bad. This Joey Bosa contract. Five years, $135 million. Yeah. I mean, These defensive ends keep getting paid. These well, running backs know, can't get paid nothing, though. No. It's well, it, it depends on the running back you're talking about because Christian McCaffrey got broke off, right? So, yeah, yeah. Um, I think and Derrick Henry got what he, he he needed as well. I think he got what he deserved as well. Um, but you know, certain situations people are going to be a little skeptical, but it is what it is. I, I think when you talk about Joey Bosa, though, they have to they have to get after you, you know, okay, the NFL is about two things affecting the quarterback and protecting the quarterback. That's why you mm -hmm. see tackles getting paid a lot of money, guards are going to start getting paid a lot of money because of the defensive tackle position. Um, and then on the other side, it's going to be pass rushers and corners, right? That How do you stop the passing game? And so yeah. um, you'll see safety start getting paid as well because of tight ends, the way teams are using tight ends. But, you know, Bosa, they're, they're in the AFC West where you got Patrick Mahomes right there. You got to try to beat him. And it, yeah. Patrick just got that 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 half a bill. He got that half a billy. Yeah, like I mean, we didn't even we you couldn't even fathom that when we couldn't were playing. Even but fathom it. But he got half a bill, so you got to find a way to get after him a little bit. And I think that's the most important thing, right? So you pay both. So you have Ingram on the other side. You have Derwin James. I mean, they're the Chargers are trying to do something. They're, you know, they're trying to uh, change the culture and the stigma of that Chargers organization. Now, let's remember back when we were playing, Merriman held out. Bosa held out his rookie year. All these first round rookies held out because they couldn't get a deal done. Um, I think Tom Telesco is like, listen, we got to change that because we need to start getting some of these bigger free agents to come to Los Angeles, help us sell tickets, do all these things. We need to start winning more games. And so the first thing you do that is by paying a guy that's been balling for you, mm -hmm. right? We always talked about in our locker room, you got to take care of home before you go outside. Yeah, you, you, sure. can't, you can't pay nobody from down the street and then he can't be bringing in them. Can't be bringing in them, them, them Joey Porters. Yeah, you can't do that, right? The mojos. Right, you can't do that. And so I think that is that was one of the the, the 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 when you pay a guy like this, that's what you're telling your team. If you ball, we're gonna cash you out because that's the most important thing, right? As a player, you want to get you want to we see money as respect, yeah. right? When you come in the locker room and you get paid right away, you 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 have some type of respect. Now you gotta work hard and ball out to get to keep it. But as soon as you get broke off, and we all know this, like the highest paid person in the room is going to be get the most respect. He'll end up being a leader right away. Yeah. And so I think that's, the, that's a very smart move for them to get him, get him locked in and, and try to, you know, knock the Chiefs off, which is going to be a pretty tough task. And, and I like when you talk about, you know, when you get paid, you're kind of ushered into that core of the team. And like those are the core players who are going to be relied on to perform, relied on to lead the team, relied on to set the pace. 
you know, and it's usually only like 10 or 12 guys who right. are actually, you know, the ones that get paid. Like when we were playing, it was, you know, like 10 guys. And when you get that contract, now there's a different level of expectation. And, you know, like you said, you pay home first. That's one thing that, you know, for lack of a better word, Jacksonville has kind of sucked at. Uh, and since we been since we were there, they kind of sucked at that. Like, right. Uh, you know, they, they, and, and, and we're veering off a little bit from, from, from Joey Bosa, but I think it's important because, you know, these guys and like ourselves, you go out there, you, you play through injuries, you play through, through pain, you know, you go up against top tier athletes week in and week out. And, you know, what better way to show your appreciation to the player than giving them the money that, you know, he's worth giving him money that he's, that, that he's, that he's playing for. That he's earned, and right? Giving him some stability, you know? And one thing that uh, I always thought was, was kind of unique with, with us was that uh, whenever we ended up having, you know, money to spend, a lot of times we would go into free agency and try and find players, but you have guys who were going into their last year, like Daryl, like Daryl Smith. Yeah. Uh, who, you know, you can give this guy three more years and have a leader, a, a leader you know you can trust, or you can just start, you know, going and picking from the, whatever the pool is uh, in the league. And whenever other players see that the team chose to go to the pool instead of paying the guy that's been here with all these other guys for years playing, that affects kind of the chemistry with the with the organization as well from the players. I, you know, that's something I, I – um... It's so funny you say that because uh, we had to talk about uh, the Jets, right, and Jamal Adams and the trade and all that mm-hmm. going on. And and I and I, I had to say this because I, I truly believe this, and a lot of people may not agree with me or not. But when you're a general manager, your job is not to just scout talent. Mm. That's why you got the job is because you're a good uh, you're a good you can identify talent really well nine out of ten times. But once you become a general manager, you have to manage. That's why it says general manager, right, GM. Yeah. You have to manage personalities and expectation. That is your job. It's just like a head coach. When you become a head coach, nine out of ten times, you stop coaching. Yeah. You have to manage the game. You have to manage practice. You have to manage the locker room. That is your job. You, you, you go from being a coach to a manager and, and trying to keep everything in order. And so when you talk about these GMs, like, you have to understand your locker room. So, okay, I go get a guy from free agency. I'm going to give him $10 million to sign. Okay. But, but I still got a left tackle in the building or I got a DN in the building that we decided to go out and say, you know what, we'll take care of him later. We're going to pay this guy. If that guy doesn't show up, if that guy doesn't play worth that money that you gave him, mm-hmm. you might as well forget these dudes over here. Cause they're going to ball out and then they're going to dip. Yeah. And then you gonna be looking like, why, why is he mad? What, what's wrong? Like, why do they want to leave? Yeah. Well, when you had the chance to pay me, you didn't pay me. And then you brought in some sucker who comes in and doesn't even play so, up to his money. I'm, and now I'm standing here like, what's going on? I'm going to give you a great example. And I think the biggest example is Jacksonville with Jalen Ramsey. It's right? Jalen Ramsey Jay- and, and Yannick Ngakwe yeah. right now. Well, I'll give you that too. So think about this. Jalen Ramsey is all pro. Jalen Ramsey is all everything. Mm-hmm. And he's trying to get a deal done. You have paid four other dudes – before him, on top of bringing in A.J. Bouye, giving him the whole bag next yeah. to him. A.J. Bouye ain't covering the number one wide receiver. And no disrespect no. to him, Jalen was. He was following Hopkins. He was doing all those all those things during those time. So if I'm Jalen, I'm looking like, well, why has he got the bag, but I'm doing all the work? Yeah, everybody's getting bags handed out to him, except, but me. except for the cat who's making the plays. Right. And so, I mean, he won, he won the game in the playoffs against Buffalo. He won that game. Oh, well, and you think know? about this. In, against Pittsburgh... A.B. was going off, and he was getting the best of Bouye. And mm-hmm. in the second half, they put Ramsey on on, on, on A.B. to shut him down. Mm-hmm. Again, where's my money? Yeah. <laughs> if I'm doing this, and this is not saying that A.J. wasn't, is, wasn't worth the money that he got. What I'm saying is Jalen Ramsey is like, if he's worth that, the I'm worth X. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. No, it makes sense. And, and again, you know, you look in, you're looking now – you know, fast forward to, to this Joey Bosa signing, you're looking at this, uh, but what, what do you think that means for other defensive ends in the, in, in that, in that uh, uh, AFC West? 
Well, I, I, not even not only the AFC West. I think around the league, right? So you have Yannick Ngakwe who's looking. He may not get broke off the same way Joey Bosa did, but the price is high now. Yeah, and, I, and that's the and that's just, the other thing just lifted the market up. And that's and you know it's so funny because I follow Vito Stellino on on uh, Twitter because Vito actually for the people. Yeah. People don't know, but I thought he was Vito, against it, but yeah. he actually for us, right? <laughs> but Vito kept it one hundred. He was like, "Look, if the Jags would have gave Yanni twenty to twenty one, like he asked for last year, it would look like a bargain right now compared to the 27, 25, 22, 23 that you're seeing." He mm-hmm. goes, "Now that you wait, guess what? In order to keep him, he'll need at least twenty five because he's the next guy up, right? And that's yeah. the way this thing plays." And so my dad used to always tell me this, and I always tell people this. You gonna pay now or you gonna pay later? Pay but you now, gonna have to pay. Ready, but you gonna pay regardless. <laughs> you gonna have to pay. So you might as well cash them out early and get these deals done.